Let's move on to Jaguars, Texans. I've come full circle on all, on these two teams. I was going to confidently bet the Jacksonville Jaguars under, and it's not that last exhibition game. It has nothing to do with me. Nothing to do with it. I've, I've just heard some cappers that I respect believe in Urban Meyer and believe. If you're in any way, shape, or form a Buckeyes fan, you cannot be trusted. <laughs> I, I, look, I I like the Buckeyes, and I don't know if I believe in Urban Meyer as an NFL coach. Well, clearly, when Urban Meyer says we made some cuts based on vaccinations, and then says, "Oh no, no, we did definitely did because of all of the players' union shit that was going to come his way," it was a very funny mistake that a head coach shouldn't make because you shouldn't be so ignorant to make those type of statements. Dennis Garcia says Houston Moneyline. I, my whole plan was to bet the Texans. That was my whole plan. Let's look at the market right now. And I, I've got cold feet over the last, you know, as soon as you press the button. And then that shit happens. The two and a half is still there where I need it. I, Two and a half at Pinnacle and Intertops. I thought they were at Bet 3 Survive 2. I can still get Houston plus three, but that's not going to last. If you like Houston, get on that plus three right now because it'll be two and a half here shortly. I also wanted Jaguars under the season win total, and I've hesitated on that, and that's not made my final cut as of this point. I'd love to hear it. And Eric Jones says Jags all day. All right, let's go. They bring in Trevor Lawrence, obviously. Travis Etienne was supposed to be a big piece of the puzzle. He's out for the entire season with a foot injury. Marvin Jones comes in. Wide receiver Chris Manhurts, tight end from the Panthers. Shaquille Griffin, cornerback from the Seahawks. He had a big year last year. Uh, and Rayshon Jenkins, the safety, comes in from the Chargers. They lose Conley to the Texans, wide receiver, who was a big piece of the puzzle for them, and Keelan Cole also to the Jets. 17 years as a head coach in college for Urban Meyer and – now we see if he can deal with men. And Trevor Lawrence under center. And my initial breakdown was like, these guys who just know winning, 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 better get used to losing. And I'm, and I'm starting to, just from other cappers' breakdowns, I'm starting to hesitate on that, not because of my own thoughts. I think that they're going to, to possibly lose here. And I think they're going to hit the under, but the cappers that are saying this are money-making cappers. And I can't just pretend that they're not. And so Shark, Marvin Jones, outside receivers, you got Chano. I, I think Chano is going to have an absolute monster season. <sighs> then James Robinson – is going to have to have a, a big, big team. And he's capable. I think, you know, James Robinson, I mean, obviously nobody cheers for their teammates to get hurt, but he's got to be licking his chops now. Now all eyes on him. And Carlos Hyde comes in with $2 million guaranteed and gets to play for his ex-coach. So, you know, Meyer and Hyde go way back. So they did not acquire any offensive line help, and that was my first thing with this Jaguar team. I was like, why would they do that? Now they draft Walker Little in the second round. I, th I thought the ETN pick was a luxury pick from a team that could not afford a luxury pick. Well put. Well put. Uh, they draft a Walker Little, what, in 2018? Was it 2017? Uh, he's barely played. The guy has barely played. The offensive line is going to be better. Brandon Linder and A.J. Cannon, Andrew Norwell. But saying they're going to be better doesn't mean much. Uh, Joe Cullen comes in after five years with the Ravens. We know how good the Ravens were. 18 sacks this team had. So they try to fix that. They bring in Roy Roberts and Harris. They bring in Jihad Ward. They bring in Malcolm Brown in a trade with the Saints. They draft Taven Bryan last year. Or no, sorry, former uh, a few years ago, he's not helped them at all. Caleb on Chase on in 2020 is supposed to step up. We haven't seen him do that. Uh, Miles Jack is excellent, and Shaquille Griffin is going to help. Uh, I do not 
know what to do now, but I wanted to talk this out because I want to bet the Texans. I Nick Casario does a masterful job, and he gets no respect because Belichick gets all the respect. I loved what Casario did on defense, and we'll get into that in a second, but I don't know about the Cully signing his head coach. Uh, Tim Kelly in year three as offensive coordinator. He's the only guy that got to stick around. Uh, Lovey Smith comes in, first year defensive coordinator. They bring in Philip Lindsay and Mark Ingram at running back. Tyrod Taylor from the Chargers. Davis Mills drafted third out of Stanford. Anthony Miller from the Bears. They lose J.J. Watt, Will Fuller, and Randall Cobb, players that didn't want to be there. Look, Deshaun Watson had it all. Gets no, no pity from me just because he wants to bust a nut whenever he goddamn pleases. He had the whole world in the palm of his hands. God, man, if it's that big of a deal, drop a rig, suck your own dick. DeAndre Hopkins comes – the whole DeAndre Hopkins started everything here. He gets traded and everything starts falling apart. Casario can fix all this, and he did that by signing one- and two-year contracts. It was all one- and two-year contracts – and now there's a huge battle on defense. And I think this battle on defense, I think it's, the defense is going to be very good. They draft Nico Collins, 89th overall, for a vertical threat because Fuller's gone, Cooks is gone, whatever. Uh, this defense is going to be good. And Lovey Smith, obviously, has a work cut out for him. But I shouldn't say good. This defense is yes. going to be so much better than it was that's, last year. That's a stretch to say good. They're going to be so much better than they were last year. Let's, let's not – well – Jimmy, let's not forget that this is this was one of the most talent depleted rosters in all of football last year, and they're losing Watt and Watson. Uh, I've already been clear that I don't think Watt is the player he was. Watt's let's, a whiny fucking baby. Get him the fuck out of there. You think JJ Watt's a whiny baby? He was last year when they needed him to step up and show some fucking leadership. I think he'd just been at the end of his rope. Ah, uh, he's a he's a fucking whiny baby. Shut your mouth and play strong football and step up for everybody that that is wearing your fucking jersey in the in the stadium. I, he, High standards from Jimmy the Bag here. I, I thought I thought he was a whiny fucking baby last year. That is the crack and duck. <laughs> Maybe it's the crack. And duck. But I thought he was a whiny fucking baby last year, and it's good. Get him, get him out, get him fucking out. Uh, I think their defense is going to be much better. They look. I know the preseason doesn't matter, but when you sign everybody on one and two year contracts, the preseason matters. Ten turnovers in three preseason games. Uh, I want to bet the Texans badly, but I haven't pulled the trigger. Should I pull the trigger, Bebsy? I do not think you should, and it's not. It's not a belief. And I, I just look at these two rosters. Uh, one has some talent, albeit a rookie coach, uh, rookie quarterback. Uh, there are weapons on, like, Shark, Chanel, Robinson are weapons. They, these are talented football players. Uh, I don't see the same talented football players on the Houston Texans roster. And I, and I like Terod Taylor. Uh, I, I hope he does well. I – Look, this this Texans team is just – there is nothing good coming out of there. Like you know, there, all the players there, coming out. There is good. Uh, there is good. They get – look, they get they get rid of the, the whiny little bitches. They get rid of the guys who need their dick sucked instead of, you know, a massage. Not that I ever get massages. And I can understand why it dicks like that. I regress. I, I do think that – they got rid of the bad apples. Now they have people fighting for jobs. Yeah, I look, I don't think – I think that they've done the necessary housekeeping that doesn't make them better now. It makes them primed to get better. But right now they're still terrible. They're terrible right now. I'll stay off this game. Uh, Birdie says no betting for you the rest of the night. Cracking goggles are not good betting eyes. Uh, look how uh, – I mean, but come on. Let's let's just look at this market here. This market is you got. We've spent an insane amount of time on the one of the worst games of the week already. Let me see. This Texas is going. The Texans are going to go down to two and a half in a second. 
I'm going to go down to two and a half in a second. Um, okay. Uh, you know what? I, I'm not going to make a decision about this right now. But I ha- But you have to if you want to bet this game. If you want the Houston Texans at all, then you have to bet them tonight because – Within 24 hours, it's going to be two and a half, and that's a that's a. I want I want the Texans, man, and I love that that fucking little whiny ass baby JJ Watt. Fucking, you know who needs his dick sucked when he's getting a massage? JJ Watt, so he stopped whining like a little bitch. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna move on to Texas. Oh, maybe I okay. I'm gonna think it over. I'm gonna think. Think it over, Jimmy. Get get after that one in the morning. <laughs> 